um, column. And so um, that organi um, organization is really, you know, uh, it's open um, to everyone. You don't have to be a WLA member. Um, you And all you have to do is just um, contact me and I can sign you up to um, on the email list. Um, so, yep. Um, yeah. So that's the that's the inclusive services zig. Um, it it does meet about four times a year, but there's a lot of email exchanging um, between meetings. A few other projects that we're working on um, with Jean Anderson at SCLS, and you're going to hear more about it in just a few moments. We are planning a three session continuing ed series on social work in public libraries. We had our first one in March mm -hmm. and then we have um, and that was with um, a librarian from Hennepin County from Minnesota looking at how what what could, does social work look like in a public library when you're not a social worker. Our second one coming up is with um, Pamela Westby from uh, the Ellie Phillips Memorial Library in, in Eau Claire and with um, Abby. Now I see Abby. So I, I'm, what, what is her social worker's name? Mark, can you help me? Libby Richter. Oh, Thank Libby. you. I knew it was like Abby. So I was looking at Lib Abby and I was thinking Libby, Libby Richter. It's okay. I, I went to college with her. We worked at the same library in college. I, so. I wondered, I was making mm -hmm. that connection. So that's why I was getting confused. Mm -hmm. So with Libby, so they'll be doing a presentation or webinar for us on Mar April 28th. Is that right, mm -hmm. Mark? Yep. Um, other things that we're doing is we are working with the Sun Prairie Public Library Board to go through the um, inclusive services assessment guide, especially the section for board directors, library board directors. So, and there's a lot of other webinars that are coming up that Jean is working on, including looking at your collection to make collections more accessible. We've got a bunch that were done last year that we'll continue to refer back to. So that's kind of an update. Did I miss anything, Mark? Uh, no, I, I think we're, we're good. Uh, I'm actually just going to um, type in a few notes. Okay, and I'm taking some too, so thank you. And um, and Mark is working with the Portage Public Library on developing a network of, of social service providers, and that's something that, well, I'm talking for you, Mark, I'm sorry, but um, that, oh, no, that he's, we could maybe replicate in other libraries in the future. So Mark and I are really busy with inclusive services, and it feels pretty good. All right, I will jump ahead then to our next um, item, which is Mark and I, the, the third webinar in the series of the Social Work in Public Libraries webinars, um, is we're going to invite directors of social work or field placement directors of schools of social work mm -hmm. um, to present at an upcoming webinar about what social work interns, what type of hours they're looking for, what type of field placements that they are looking for. And ultimately what we would love to do is see how public libraries could be host sites for social work interns. But there's a little bit of work that we have to do before we get to certainly the webinar and definitely having social work students in public libraries. So Mark, do you wanna share the um, document that you created with the questions? Yeah, um, all right, let me pull it up. So um, Mark created a list of questions that we will have, that we have for the social work departments. All right, so I'm gonna actually, oh, let's see. Okay, where's the share button? Sorry, folks. Do you want me to do it? 
Uh, I can. Got it. Here we go. There we go. All right. Okay. Um. So, you know, we have some very basic questions for the social work school. Um, typically, typically, they're going to be, what, what do you require for hosting, for, for host sites, for schools of social work? Um, what are some examples of projects and programs and activities that others have worked on? during their field studies. So really getting input from them about what, what, what types of experiences are you looking for, what's required, that type of thing. And you can see that right in front of you. Mark, do you have anything mm -hmm. to add? Um, yeah, so um, in, um, so in this, um, part of um, of the of the social work in um, libraries um, project. Um, this is definitely sort of like um, something that could be an uh, an offshoot from uh, stemming from that um, project, and um, it would uh, I guess um, we, what we're I think what we're looking for um, is some. Um, input on um, social work interns in in libraries. Um, what kinds of um, things that um, that could uh, that they could help um, um, communities with in uh, in the library um, setting, or even help um, library staff. Um, and um, I can give you a couple of examples of what I've heard of um, social work interns doing in libraries, um, if that would be helpful. Um, so uh, some of the work that I've, um, I've heard about is um, establishing some kind of um, shared space or office hours kinds of work where they, people, uh, they'd have, um, they'd have some uh, time to do, um, it would be short term direct service. So it wouldn't be like case management um, type of work um, where it's a long term relationship with someone, but it would be like a, um, so for example, it could be signing up for um, uh, the um, Affordable Care Act marketplace thing or something of that nature. Um, or helping with a job, um, get ready, um, getting ready for jobs or, or careers. Um, another um, uh, example of what I've seen or, or what I've heard about uh, is been um, providing training to staff. Um, so um, finding alternatives to um, content attacking police when there is some kind of a behavior, uh, a behavioral crises or uh, mental health crises going on. Um, and, um, you know, the, the more, uh, the more appropriate intervention may be with a, um, with a counselor versus a police officer. So things of that nature or training library staff in concepts like trauma-informed service or, or social services. So. Oh, can't hear you. <laughs> there we go. Sorry. Um, so those are some examples of requests and um, examples of things that we've been hearing from library staff. The need for so social support help has come up in some of the recent all directors meetings. So directors are thinking, especially as more and more libraries continue to open and have you know, more broader library services open again to libraries, that there are going to be needs um, for, for social work support in libraries. And 
what we're going to do is create a just a, a very basic Google form uh, next week on what types of concerns do you have? You know, what, what questions would you have for a social work intern? Are you interested? What types of work and support are you looking for? What questions do you have? And we'll send that out to everybody. So we just wanted to give you a heads up. Earlier today, Mark and I were also talking about, so for some libraries, they may not be able to, they might not have enough work, you know, for a full semester's field study for a social work student. So what could it look like if South Central is the host agency for the student um, and that student would work with a cohort of libraries on different social work um, you know, programs, resources, identifying partners, that type of thing. So we're really open to helping out in many different ways. But what's important to us is that this is really something that will be supportive of libraries and it's not going to be an extra task. So it will be, you know, everything is entirely optional, but we, um, we're going to follow through with, with connecting with social work schools and just being librarians and getting the, the information that we need to share with you guys. So stay tuned. I don't know if either one of you have any questions, thoughts, or recommendations for what a social work student could do in a public library right now. Feel free to, to let us know. I'll, I'll just say that I, I like what you said at the end there about um, having one person for South Central because I was just right before you said it, I was thinking the exact same things like, oh, that'd be great, but we wouldn't have we don't have enough need for a full time person. Definitely it would be like once in a blue moon yeah. kind of need. So I I was just thinking it and then you said it. So I was just kind of just confirming that that that's a good idea I like that. Yeah. Uh, so um, to follow up, would that be, um, could that be something like, um, would you look, want to investigate like a on-demand um, model or, uh, or like, a, or an office hours model? I don't know um, how either of those could work. I haven't flushed the, those ideas. They just came to me, but is that um, something that we should be, um, that we could ask uh, the, um, uh, the schools of social work? That's a good question. Yeah, maybe I, cause I feel like when an issue comes up in my library that would be solved with a social worker, it's so sporadic. Uh, like I said, once in a blue moon, so maybe not office hours. Cause that would, I feel like uh, you know, it's like, oh, shoot, this like big event happened on this day that it, the social worker is not doing their office hours that day. So, yes, I don't know what the on demand would look like, but that seems more like what would what we need, sort of a case by case scenario that we could mm -hmm. a resource we could reach out to when those issues do come up. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Um, that's even even office hours, it's like, well, if if they need something, it'd be, I, I feel like, where would we put them during the office hours if they were here every week? But um, yeah, our, our, we're a small library. So yeah, the need is very, very minimal, at least on a regular basis. So I agree the on-demand might be better. So. Okay. We could figure out a way to connect them. You know, and um, I do have to four one one. Right, I, I do have to say this. Um, the only um, I think the one of the only silver linings of this whole pandemic situation is the how skilled we've all become in remote um, connections, and I'm wondering. Um, if there is some way that, um, you know, one of the ways to connect would be through a video service. 
So um, like um, maybe a, an extra um, paid Zoom account that would definitely have to be locked down and we'd have to work with um, whomever we're working with on whatever their, their privacy confidentiality needs are. But that's something that could be more sporadic on demand. Yeah, I think the larger libraries might be more um, comparable for office hours. Mm -hmm. um, the, lar the just the larger libraries and the smaller libraries or the more more rural libraries would definitely be more the on demand. But yeah, I like the idea of uh, a virtual connection. Mm -hmm. And you both really speak to what we've seen before is, you know, a library will advertise that we have resume help on Thursday afternoon from two to four. And not a lot of people need that help specifically on Thursday afternoon from two to four. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, or, or there's a stigma, especially in smaller libraries about coming in for, you know, the social work hours. And so, you know, really knowing that um, this isn't like a reader's advisory service that we're talking about, um, that it is something that, you know, has some nuances and um, will have some confidentiality. Um, that's something that we definitely need to take into consideration. And Susan, exactly what you said, you know, the smaller libraries, the needs are there. Oh my goodness, there are needs for social service support. Um, but where would that person be? What are the what are the staff limitations of supervising somebody from a school of social work? So that was really, really good input. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So we will, I think what I'm interested in is connecting the larger libraries who have the staff to have their own, you know, 80 hour per semester social work student, connecting those libraries directly with schools of social work, as well as figuring out something that we can do to support a cohort of libraries. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So what I think, what, what kind of seems like the next steps in my head are to, we'll draft a survey, we'll, we'll draft a, hey, tell us what you need so we can plan type survey, and we'll share it out with the inclusive services email list to get input. Does that sound good to you, Mark? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. And that's something we'll work on next week. All right. Great. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh and actually I'm um I would be curious to know um i know it's sort of really on the spot that i'm asking but um in your um in your libraries i'm curious to know what kinds of um of needs that um where you've stopped yourself and said gosh i really wish we had a um a, you know this person could really be assisted more with a social work type assistance versus um, uh, or uh, alongside um, reference assistance. I'm just. Well, I can think of a few times where our CERC staff has had to help someone like, like fill out some kind of complicated paperwork, like filing for unemployment, um, that kind of thing, or like, tax help that was really complicated. I'm, I guess that's maybe not such a social worker, but if they were um, experiencing homelessness and having to file taxes, that was kind of a whole complicated mm -hmm. thing. Um, so a lot of like computer help kind of thing in that way. Um, but something uh, one of you said earlier also sparked my memory of remembering um, when we had um, some problems with some 
teens with behavioral issues and we did end up reaching out to the police to help with that and yeah having maybe a social worker that could kind of deal help with the family of the teen and everything that that could have been really helpful too to piggyback off of what abby just said um maybe maybe for like the tax assistance or something maybe it's somebody that just is a really doesn't know how to read and they have to either fill out a job application or um or file their taxes so we're not computer literate we're not been... computer literate yeah mm -hmm. And sometimes some of those things we do handle, but it takes up so much time. It does. Yeah. 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 Uh, now, do you think maybe it would be um, uh, if, would it be out of the, the realm of uh, or, um, or more of a could be um, a stumbling block uh, to um, if we did it um, virtual style, would um, would the library staff uh, be able to help set the um, set folks up, or we or we would really need it to be super straightforward, um, just to save the uh, save library time. That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying to yeah. Through how that would work. Yeah. Well, I, you, yeah. Mm -hmm. I know that the computers are supposed to now be set up or will be set up so that we library staff can see what's on a patron's computer if they need help, if we're still socially distancing. Mm -hmm. Maybe they could do mm -hmm. something similar to with regard to like that video conferencing that you were talking about mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. earlier. Mm -hmm. yeah i don't know if we could get like a i'm just thinking if we could get like a separate like a tablet or something that's just for video conferences with the social worker and like we just hand them the tablet and start the zoom call or something i i don't know yeah. i don't know but would we want to hand something like that that's portable to someone yeah, you may not have a library card. It could easily walk out the door. True. Yeah, I guess if, if, um, if they're if they're if they're not all there mentally, right, or what have you. Yeah, that could be. Or if, you know, mm -hmm. if their their mental state is just they've had so much going on and just it they don't intend to it just happens kind of a thing. You know, if you've just had that bad of a day, you never know. And that might be a question for tech staff. You know, there might yeah. be yeah. things that that they know of. Or maybe have something on like a specific computer that um, that wouldn't be easily portable. You know. Yeah. And I think that could differ from library to library too. Yeah, especially with mm -hmm. space needs. Exactly. Yeah, and that might be a question that we ask people. I mean, what I'm envisioning is almost like um, social worker on demand for mm -hmm. yeah for South Central Library System staff um, that you know you could either Zoom with or that the patron could connect with. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, what are the tech needs? I, I like the idea of having like the device, the thing, the computer, the iPad that is so easy to use for library staff that you just like click a button and there's the help. The technology mm -hmm. is there. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that would, that's a tech question. And then part of it also is, and you guys know this and the work that you've done, is letting everybody on staff know that this service is available. 
you know, that that this information is available and here's where you get it. You know, we see that with even the databases, that the databases are often not used as much as they could be because we have to remind ourselves that we have, you know, Chilton's, that we have all of the different databases. Okay. I, I feel like you guys have given us a lot to work mm -hmm. from. And um, if you think of anything between, I mean, now we'll send out the survey next week, just shoot one of us an email. Okay, well, right. speaking of resources and letting people know where information is, Mark has been working for the last couple of months on updating an inclusive services webpage for SCLS. And we're pretty excited about it because we're changing yeah. the format. So Mark, I'll let you take that away. Sure. So, um, uh, yep, uh, we've been uh, working on this um, resource, um, combining the um, outreach resource webpage and adding inclusive services resources to them. And a little background on it, um, this um, uh, website, it's actually a collection of web pages and, um, uh, and it is, follows sort of the model of the um, uh, statewide inclusive services assessment and guide, um, which is um, available through um, DPI and you know what, I, uh, I bet we should, one thing to add is a link to it. Yeah. Uh, um, but uh, the way that it is structured is um, that um, there are different areas, um, four different areas um, that cover sort of like uh, the whole range of library um, services. And and um, the four areas are who is responsible. So that is things like governance, trustees, um, and staffing, and that kind of those kinds of um, uh, well people in the work. Um, and then there is uh, what the library has to offer. So um, things like every uh, well libraries offer collections, programs, services. Uh, where the interactions take place. So um, that is sort of um, looks at it from like a facility standpoint. So your library um, building and surrounding area and computers, um, that's also part of facilities and then access. Um, so things like computer access, library cards, those kinds of things. And then the other one is engaging with the community. And that encompasses things like marketing, community engagement, and then a couple of areas um, that um, also uh, should have, um, should take uh, some, uh, or should have uh, be covered, um, include self-care and inclusive culture in the library. And so, um, what I, I think we can do, and actually I'm going to, um, so you can see it for yourselves and explore it. I'm, uh, it's in the um, agenda, but I'm going to copy the link and pop it over into the chat. And that way everyone can um, uh, take a peek at it. Um, but um, do you want me to just give a, a, a very brief tour and then um, collect any any feedback and impressions. Yes. Folks have? All right. Um, so um, all three of these links go to the same place, um, the who is responsible um, page. And here are basically just resources that are um, that cover thing um, topics in governance and administration and staffing. So um, we've got that. Um, yep. And, mm -hmm. and right now, this is just in draft. So this website hasn't been published yet. 
it's something that we're we're fine tuning and um, are, are working to get out. We also want to make it as specific to our region as possible. So if there are any, you know, county resources, county by county by the seven counties we serve, you know, we really want to provide, we want to be the librarians, we want to provide the information to pertinent information, the, the links to pertinent information, and to do it as easily and even visually as possible. So we're really excited. The, the landing page, the home page, we're going to have some images from member libraries that represent the who is responsible concept, that represent the where interactions take place concept, so that it isn't simply a list of an exhaustive list of all the places you can go, but is very, very specific. So it's like almost like calling 411. Like, these are the four places that we can go. Yep. And um, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and, you know, we, we're making this look different than some of the other SCLS web pages. It could be something that you share directly with patrons to or direct patrons directly to some of the links, some of the resources that are included on these pages. That would be fine. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and and um, uh, please feel free to hop in with uh, any feedback about the page or things that um, are in any input is welcome to. Um, so I can. You, you know, Mark, I wonder if we should add on each one of these four pages, um, like a specific. Do you have information that you think needs to be here? Please mm -hmm. send an email to Mark. You know, be a, have a very specific message because, you know, we're we're in one county, but you know, up in Wood County, for example, they might know of some very specific partnerships and agencies that that we can link to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a, a feedback form. Yeah, and we might be able to do that through, I mean, we could easily do it through a Google form or whatever um, Rose wants us to use for our web pages. There's like through Drupal, I think there's Drupal forms, right, Susan? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, we use Drupal forms and we also have Google forms on our website, both of them. Okay. Great. It just depends on what you want, how easy you want it to be and how com how comfortable you are with Drupal? <laughs> <laughs> Although Rose can set them up too if she if she knows your what you want on it too. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, because it's inclusive services, we want everybody to be included. You know, it's we we want to we, we're not assuming that we're the experts in no. in any of it. Um. So uh, let's see. I'll show uh, the. What the library has to offer. So things that like uh, a couple of resources like um, in uh, resources from um, about anti racism and um, collection audits and um, even um, one that's a, a resource that's has um, videos um, that are like described and captioned and um, if you are uh, looking for things such as um, various organizations that are more specialized than, say, the American Library Association, you could um, uh, reach out to, say, the AILA, which is the American Indian Library Association, or, um, or BCALA, Black Caucus American Library Association. So it's sort of like a, a could be a jumping off point as well. Um, and, um, if there are any, yeah, um, yep, any ideas are uh, about things that, um, that are like hot topics or not, or needed resources. Some timely, yeah. Timely, timely topics. Mm -hmm. So, 
Yeah. yeah. So that that's something else that that we've been working on. And by we, I mean, Mark has done the bulk of this work. So thanks, Mark, for getting this set up. Yeah. And we should um, mm -hmm. uh, just a little more tweaking and we can, I think, release it really soon, too. Yeah. yeah. It's one of those things that I always put on the back burner because there are so many things that there are so many fires on the front burner that I need to address first and then um, spend a, a nice chunk of relaxing time working on a web page. I always think I'm going to be able to do that. But <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I know you all get it. So those are the reports from us. During last week's or last month's meeting in February when we met, one of the topics that got a lot of attention was looking at our collections, looking at, um, you know, identifying our ways that how inclusive are we in our collections? Do we have a diverse collection? And not only the materials that are in the collection, but how do we make it easy for people to find what they're looking for in, in the collections that we have? Um, one thing that has come up since our last meeting, one thing that I've been working on with youth services staff and youth services librarians is um, the Dr. Seuss Enterprise decision to stop publishing six of Dr. Seuss's books because of racist depictions of people um, in, those, in those six books. And so looking at that through a lens of inclusion, looking through decisions like that, through lenses of inclusion and providing safe spaces in public libraries really leads to discussions about weeding and you know how do we weed collections thinking about the mission of our libraries thinking about who we serve right now that's been coming up um, quite a bit in conversations that i'm having with youth services folks so um so I don't know, we, we may not have enough people to talk about collections and inclusion, or if you have some ideas that you'd like to just talk to all of us about, we're open for that right now. I guess I'll, I'll add is that, well, I, I buy the books for the uh, young adult collection at my library and I often, uh, we'll see lists posted by different, you know, publishers or just on social media of, you know, the new books by like black authors, for example, and I'll kind of go through those lists and check the, oh, did I buy those? Make sure I'm just kind of staying current. I, I guess that's kind of just what I'm doing is um, just kind of following a lot of um, lists of diverse books on uh, just just different social media places and just checking uh, my collection to see if I'm buying enough of those. That's kind of all I have on the topic. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have some examples of of you know publishers too, or of places where you're getting these lists, like we need diverse books. These are some organizations that we can link to on the. Um, the outreach or the inclusive services web pages too. The We Need Diverse Books is a good one to yeah. reference for sure. Yeah. Um, we've been doing the Read Woke um, through Beanstack, mm -hmm. and um, I've been putting the lists together for our for our patrons for adults. And there's lots of links and ideas and lists for the children and some and a few less for teens, but there's very few for adult. So that would be a night nice, if, if people could compile for all age levels, that would be awesome. Um, this yesterday, I read a really great graphic novel um, that would uh, be great for all, all collections if you do a teen graphic novels and like superheroes. What was it? Um, I'm pulling it up on my Goodreads because I haven't said that I finished it yet, even though I did. Um, it's uh, Nubia Real One. 
Let's see if I can pull up the picture. Ooh. Oh, I haven't heard of that one before. Yeah, it's it's really it. it was really good. Who published it? Um, let's see. You can tell me who published it. Um, it's by L. L. McKinney. Okay. Was the illustrator. And okay, DC Comics was the one who put that out. Well, and, and Susan, I was actually looking to you because you are adult services and mm -hmm. I'm so, and Abby too, um, I'm so aware of these lists and these resources that are available for youth services. Mm -hmm. But yes, finding some of, um, you know, organizations that do the same thing for adult books as we need diverse books for children and young adults is something they that we can look for. Yeah, because teachers aren't the only ones that um, shape kids' minds and teens mind, teen minds. Um, mm -hmm. Children see what their parents are reading mm -hmm. oftentimes. Not always, but oftentimes. Like, my, my son is also reading this book. He started reading it while I was driving him to his guitar lesson last night. And I finished it um, after he went to bed. And uh, he was like three pages behind me. Um, when he started his guitar lesson. So today he's probably finished it already by this point because uh, he was going to finish it this morning or this afternoon. Wow. After his homework. So mm -hmm. I really, but, uh, it was, a, it's a teen book. So, but it was really good. It, 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 uh, it would be good for anyone, um, teen or adult that is into superheroes. So, and it's, it's written by somebody who um, is part of one of the, uh, I wrote on the back cover, um, they're actually part of the organ, one of the main organizations that has to do with um, inclusivity and um, diversity and equality, you know, I can't remember the name of the group, but they were like one of the main people that started it. So, um, oh, and Robin Smith is the illustrator. Okay. So, but yeah, I, I highly recommend it. Did you read that on Edelweiss or in finished publication? I, I, I had the physical book. You did, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I'm thinking even like having very informal recommendations from each other. Mm -hmm. And, and here's an example of you reading a book that would be, you know, people who are adults or teens would appreciate and just letting each other know that, hey, this is a really interesting and great book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our, our friend at the library did, has done a few Facebook posts uh, about what they've been reading and that's been well received in our community mm -hmm. and they haven't, they haven't done many lately and they, they do them like videos to put on uh, Facebook. And we haven't done that here for ourselves because we've been in the middle of um, building our library, but now we're built. So maybe we'll try and do some of those for the summer. So are friends members making the videos? Uh, yes. Cool. Although they've had a major turnover of who's on their, um, their board. So I'm not sure how, if that'll, still be the case come summer because they they've been struggling now that they had the change in who's the uh who's running the the friends of the library so but hopefully we'll get some new blood that uh, is as gung-ho as the ones that left so what a fun project for friends members though you yeah. know friends members often they're they're readers and they love the library and, you know, are, are reading so much. That's pretty cool. Yeah, we have a page on our website for um, reader recommendations and both staff and patrons can email and I need to do a Facebook post to remind people it's there again. So. <laughs> and 
anybody that posted reviews in Beanstack during winter or summer, I put those in there in on our website as well. So, Take a look at that. But I don't know how to get to the metrics to see if people are reading it or not. So <laughs> I need to look into that and see if I can tell if people are reading it, seeing it. Mm -hmm. So I suppose I could also put the reviews on Facebook too. So that would also help. Then I'd have that on Facebook plus a link to that page. Now let's see what I'll try next. That's a good idea. Yeah, connecting connecting readers, not only with new books, but right. you know with Sorry, each I other. Kind patron, of. I gotta go. Help, sure, so. sure. All right. Okay. All right. Bye. <laughs> bye. 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 All right. So, what was our next topic? Um, oh, um, just uh, uh, oh. whatever uh, in inclusion, whatever. Um, so that was my was my potpourri thing, um, topics or, or other discussion. So. Oh, Susan's back. Sure, I've got a little something that I've been working on at my library, working with my director. Um, I'm working on getting a uh, better signage on our bathrooms for when we open back up because um, we just have a male and a female bathroom and we have a single stall one for families but it's way tucked back in kind of the um, back of the children's section so I want a sign that lets people know who doesn't want to use a male or female bathroom that we have that other um, single stall bathroom available um, and just where to find it because like I said it's kind of tucked away so that's I guess my uh, the bathrooms is definitely a, a project that I'm very passionate about and really want to make sure that our library is doing the best as we can yeah Oh, that's great. To go with that, do you know, is it okay to use the word unisex or or do we stick with family bathroom or is there a new term? I'm not sure what the terminology is these days. Um, we have two, fam we have now two family bathrooms, one in our children's area and one um, across from our um, men's and women's bathrooms in our new building here. But I, yeah. I just have paper signs on them for the moment um and i don't know what they i think we have them called family bathroom but i was just curious yeah. what other people were calling those i've um i've heard um all gender um restroom um so it, it goes beyond um the the gender binary mm -hmm. um, that's good i like that men and women but so mm -hmm. um that's a that's an option that i've seen um all-inclusive restroom I don't know if that's uh if that makes it complicated or or not but. I I like all gender I've seen others that are uh gender neutral and I I can't remember whatever I saw but I feel like I read somewhere that that's not as acceptable in that community um that they don't I yeah I don't remember the reason I shouldn't even say if I don't remember, but I like all gender better. That's really yeah, good. and it's shorter. If you're doing that too. less words, less less letters is best. As yeah. long as it's clear and concise. Yeah, and um, all inclusive is even longer, and it's <laughs> and some people don't know what inclusive means. So yeah, are we uh, doing just... third grade reading level. <laughs> Or single <laughs> occupancy, I've seen that too. That mm -hmm. Just to say, like, yep, there's just one person in here. Doesn't matter who it is. Mm -hmm. That's that could be a good one um, too, because um, then it it's not. I, I don't know. Um, you know, it's um, it's one of those be uh, being open to to everyone, and also trying to look at it from. Um, to make sure that, you know, um, uh, to get the community on board. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and, uh, on, on that note, I'm wondering, um, like, what kind of 
um, symbols um, on the uh, on the sign um, because I, I've I've ser um, seen um, there's uh, obviously if you're looking for um, an all gender um, restroom having a, uh, a like a stick figure which is half um, half people recognize as um, being men half people recognize as being women that sort of um, defeats the all gender ness mm -hmm. um, but one of the uh, one of the workarounds is simply putting a toilet <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> I like that yeah. I like that a lot mm -hmm. when so. you started speaking it's like well we have our, they did we did get signs to put next to them and I have no idea I haven't looked to actually see what they say uh -huh. and I have a feeling the signs are you know your standard male and female whether you you are physically male or physically female or um, if today you're feeling you connect with being male and tomorrow you connect with being female yeah I, you know maybe that's how they're trying to go right. around that. I don't know yeah but I have a feeling we've got a male and a female with a, a line in between mm -hmm. show, I don't know or male yeah. female and child is because because we're ours are technically family bathrooms right right which, which includes a, a a little bitty toilet and a regular yeah. toilet so which people really like from when i've gone to other libraries all right yeah but ours are, i think are called family bathrooms but mm -hmm. i can't remember for sure but i was just curious what uh abby what you were considering I think this is where like our language that we use English, American English, especially makes it more difficult or can make it more difficult. You know, in other in other countries, it's just called the toilet. You know, mm -hmm. it's very, very clear. Like so that picture of the toilet, like there's no question or the but, WC. Yeah, yeah the yeah. WC. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Where, you know, it seems like in our culture, it's very much about the person using it. Mm -hmm. yeah oh yeah that's a really good point point. and function versus user yeah that's, yeah that's a good way to put it yeah yeah of course we also don't assign genders to every single word like some other languages it is yeah so i wonder how they handle the the uh mm -hmm. inclusive the uh inclusive that i can't talk today the gender associations i'm fascinated mm -hmm. by that susan I'm fascinated mm -hmm. by it because I know German and I, I've too. always, yeah, right? Me too. <laughs> you got you too, Abby. Um, it was, and yeah, I just wondered like, what does it mean to grow up in a, in a culture that assigns like male masculine to the moon? <laughs> you know, like, like mm -hmm. der Mond. It's like, what, what does that mean? How do, you, how do you take in the world around you? Mm -hmm. but but german also has gender neutral too which is also mm -hmm. nice yes. but yes der rock is uh the skirt and it's masculine so oh, that's... yeah huh. oh. i'm so bad at i call everything d i call everything feminine and <laughs> i just i mess it up all the time yeah i, I don't really yeah. remember my german but i just remember from when i was learning it that they had the genders and and i think French or Spanish also had genders, but I couldn't remember for sure. So. I didn't yeah. learn those as well. Yeah, um, I know. I, uh, I I've sort of um, I've definitely worked on myself breaking away from. Actually, you know what? I never really got into the whole assigning um, ge uh, like gender genders to to objects you know it's like um but um one of the things that i keep catching myself doing and i seem to do it so often in inclusive um conversations is the whole hey guys or hey y'all i'm trying to get into y'all or something or folks um or you know I don't. nobody says hey gals or, right. or another word that includes both men and women or something that's neutral in, yeah. in our culture. And that would be great if someone could come up with a term that would work. 
Uh, and and that's sort of where I've I've been trying to. Um, that's why I often use folks because that's. I don't know. It's yeah. It's but friendly. it could be you know friends. Hey yeah. everybody. Or. I'm right there with you because in my head when I say guys I know that I I mean everyone but I know it doesn't come mm. off that way I've started trying to say hi everyone that's that's sort of my general yeah it's you hard know, though getting the hat you know getting it ingrained in my so that it's so automatic that it's just like yeah that it's comfortable mm-hmm yeah. mm-hmm yeah, I could talk about language forever. <laughs> I just, <laughs> and, and, and you know what what it does to our thoughts and our cognition. I think mm-hmm. it's fascinating. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, um, anything else, Susan? We were doing just inclusive services potpourri. If anything has come up, and that's when Abby mentioned uh, restrooms. Anything. Um. Well, as we just have moved into our space, we opened on the 17th um, of last month. So it's not even been a month yet. Um, And we're we're still getting certain things installed or set up. Um, The signs only went on next to doors and stuff last week. So um, nothing's come up that I've noticed yet for our like physical building. Yeah. But um, for me right now, it's access. How to, how to get more people to understand that we're open. That's, that's the message we're getting right now is not everybody knows that we've finally opened into the new building. And some don't wanna come in until we, they can go in the stacks okay. because they, they want to have the opportunity to browse now that they haven't for a year. So, Mm -hmm. but we're working on that. We'll hopefully have something to say about additional access um, before the end of the month. So So are you doing curbside? uh, People can come into the physical building and they can see 90% of the building. They just can't go and pick their own things off the shelf. Okay. So Mm -hmm. we have, um, we have, we're keeping, we're still keeping the holds behind the desk because we didn't want to do open hold shelving. Um, but we do have a self check that eventually we'll set up. Um, but we haven't yet. And cause that only got delivered last week anyway. Um, we have tables set up to keep people out of the stacks. Um, and we have display books and DVDs, take and makes and stuff like that for people to browse bef- currently. And um, at some point, hopefully by the end of the month, um, we can, if numbers are good, we are considering opening up, hopefully eventually the stacks. I don't know if that would be this month or further out. Sure. But um, we would like to expand our services um, maybe get some computers up and attached, but right now we still are waiting on our internet. So, uh, but people um, in our, in our community uh, often, I mean, we've been making phone calls for those people who've had holds on our hold shelf for a while um, for when we were doing express service uh, to say, Hey, did you know we're open? And uh, apparently we're getting several, Oh no, I didn't know you're open yet. Um, even though we'd, we'd been blasting, we we yeah. ha- we have things on our old building. We have things on the new building. We've got stuff at the village hall and the post office. You know, um, the grocery store, the places that hopefully they go to at least once in a blue moon. Oh, you know, to see that we're open. Uh, Facebook, but uh, but what a time to just, open a new library. Yeah, yeah it's just letting people know that we're actually here so I mean they're able to come in see 90 percent of the building they just can't walk in and grab something in the children's department in the teen department in the adult collection and dvds we can get it for them but um, the next step from that of course would be to let them pick their own which will be very nice at that point 
because yeah. we want people to be able to get materials mm-hmm. without the barriers of okay what what can i look up for you <laughs> and how inclusive you know? is that yeah. yeah yeah it's not inclusive mm-hmm. right right we want right. to be able to do that but we have we're we're going through our library board and um we're also looking at the numbers to see, you know, we, we want the numbers to be going down a certain point before we um, open up the stacks. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that that's, um, so, I mean, curbside, we haven't had any curbside since, um, since we've moved, it's all people come in and gotcha. we, um, they can um, get things either off the tables or the whole shelf or we'll pull things pull. from the shelves for them. So, mm-hmm. wow. Yeah, that that absolutely. You bring up a really uh, um, great point about um, inclusivity in the pandemic. It's so hard mm-hmm. to to um, you know we work so hard to be inclusive to enable. Um, a certain uh, uh, um, a certain degree of autonomy, um, which can promote inclusion in our um, patrons, and so it's sort of like a how do we how do we balance all of this and make sure that um, the libraries or the uh, the patrons are getting the full experience of the library or as mm-hmm. full as possible. Inclusion in a pandemic. Mm-hmm. We'll be experts on it soon. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep. So I see that it is a little after, um, it's 12 after 2. Anything else that you want to bring up? Any questions? Good. This has been really interesting. Good. Yeah. Thank Great. you both. Thank you for mm-hmm. coming. Um, I recorded this. I started recording a few minutes in, um, but so it'll be available for others to watch. Mark took some really great notes. Um, if you, if we missed anything that you saw in the notes, let us know and we'll put it back in. And we'll schedule another one of these in probably two months from now. In June, we'll do another one. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Great. All righty. Well, thanks for right. uh, coming. Yeah, thank thank you. you. Let us know what we can do. All right. Bye. Bye bye. Bye. Okay. There we have it. Stop recording.